Borderlands 4 arrived just last week, so I grabbed a copy and got playing. Well, really I mean testing, because that's pretty much all I've done for the past three days, and at times it's been quite brutal, so I can't imagine what playing the game is like on most hardware configurations. Of course, I did play the game for a bit just so I could get to a suitable section for testing, but I used an RTX 5090, and even then I was forced to dial down the resolution to 1440p and enable upscaling, because damn, was the experience at native 4K bad. I was shocked to find frame rates in the 40s. Like, what the hell is up with that? Now, I thought maybe I had some kind of weird setting enabled or the display driver just didn't work correctly. But nope, it was none of that. Rather, the RTX 5090 struggles to get near 60 FPS, and in the heavier sections of the game is well into the 40s. So that's rather shocking, and not in a good way, like... Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Ugreen and their Nexode 300 watt power bank. This beefy unit can deliver 140 watts of power via a single USB-C port with bi-directional capability allowing for a full recharge of the power bank itself in just an hour and a half. This power bank can charge five devices simultaneously across five ports and with a massive 48,000 milliamp hour capacity, you can fully recharge an iPhone 15 Pro over nine times. The Nexode 300 Watt also features a smart LED display for real-time charge data and a built-in LED light with three modes including SOS, making it perfect for weekend camping trips. Inside are automotive grade batteries that retain over 80% capacity after 3000 cycles, so you can rely on this power bank for all your charging needs. For more information on the Nexode 300 Watt power bank and the rest of Ugreen's portable lineup, check the links in the description. Okay, so today we're going to explore GPU performance in Borderlands 4 using the badass and medium presets, though I will have some preset scaling and upscaling data that we can go over in a moment. Also, as a side note, the developer has said when changing visual quality settings, gamers should wait in-game for at least 15 minutes before evaluating performance, as the shaders need to recompile. This is pretty strange, but I did look into it and saw no change in performance after prolonged gameplay. So when switching from the highest preset to the lowest, the performance I was seeing as soon as I jumped into the game was the performance I got. Even after 30 minutes, frame rates didn't improve. So not really sure what's going on there. It could be that I'm using a 9800X 3D, so this isn't an issue as the game isn't CPU limited, even with an RTX 5090. Not really sure, but I can at least confirm that this issue does not affect our results. And I'll also note that CPU utilization didn't change. We were seeing the same usage 30 minutes after loading into the game as we were upon initially loading. Anyway, before we get into the testing, let's go over some details about the game. As you'd expect, the game uses the cell shaded art direction of previous titles, but this time it does so using the Unreal 5 engine, which features technologies such as Lumina Nanite, while Borderlands 4 also takes advantage of world partition, which the developer says was used to present a larger world to the players than what they would have been able to otherwise using their own methods. Along with the Unreal Engine 5 features, the game also supports NVIDIA DLSS, AMD FSR, and Intel XESS upscaling along with frame generation. Still, despite this support, the game is unexpectedly demanding, and as a result has mixed reviews on Steam, with the bulk of the negativity due to poor frame rate performance and crashing. Thankfully in my time with the game I've only experienced a few crashes, still far from ideal, but given I've tested with over 40 GPUs just two crashes isn't too bad, but sadly it has been far less stable for many other gamers. Anyway, we should probably just get into the data now. Please note I'm using a Ryzen 7 9800X 3D with 32GB of DDR5 6000 memory, along with the latest display drivers available at the time of testing. Okay, let's get into it. First up, let's take a look at preset scaling, and for this I'm going to compare two current generation entry-level GPUs, the 16GB versions of the 5060 Ti and 9060 XT. Both are reasonably capable products, so they should easily provide a 60fps experience at 1440p using mid-range quality settings. But sadly, that is not the case with Borderlands 4. Using the lowest possible preset, labelled simply as low, the 9060 XT averaged just 62 FPS, making it 13% faster than the RTX 5060 Ti, which averaged just 55 FPS. And again, this is using the low preset. Increasing to medium dropped the 9060 XT's performance by roughly 20% to 50 FPS, 
while the 5060Ti saw a 16% decrease to just 46 FPS. Pretty insane performance, as in insanely low. The high preset reduced performance for the 9060 XT by a further 18% to just 41 FPS on average, while the 5060Ti saw a 15% reduction to just 39 FPS on average. Then things somehow managed to get even worse with the very high preset which reduced the average frame rate of the 9060XT by 24% and the 5060Ti by 26%. Both are now at around 30 FPS. Finally, we have the badass preset and in terms of performance, it's just ass. A sub 30 FPS experience at native 1440p for these GPUs. So we've just seen that performance can be more than doubled, or halved, depending on how you want to look at it, when comparing the lowest and highest quality presets. But there is another way to boost performance, and that's through the use of upscaling. Now the bulk of our testing will be conducted at the native resolution, but for those of you wondering, this is how much the various upscaling methods can boost performance for Radeon and GeForce GPUs. For this data, we're using the badass preset at 1440p, which at the native resolution allowed for a sub 30 FPS experience. Enabling quality FSR massively boosts performance of the 9060XT by 74%, which is an unexpectedly large uplift, but we also saw a similar uplift for the RTX 5060 Ti when using DLSS. It was a massive 76% faster. But as amazing as these gains are, we're still looking at performance well below 60 FPS. In fact, to reach 60 FPS, we had to use the performance mode, and this more than doubled the performance when compared to native rendering. So upscaling is going to be a must for this title. So here we are, the 1080p results using the badass preset. And finally, as you'd expect, the RTX 5090 is the fastest GPU, but you might not have expected to see just 101 FPS on average at 1080p. The RTX 4090 was also good for just 91 FPS, while the RTX 5080, 7900 XTX, 9070 XT, and RTX 4080 were all found delivering around 70 FPS. Now you might think there's something wrong with the data, as the RTX 5080 was slightly slower than the RTX 4080, but we've seen this a number of times with newly released titles, and I have seen other people reporting similar findings. So as it stands, the RTX 5080 and 4080 are very similar in Borderlands 4. Also surprising to see is the fact that the Radeon flagships, the 7900 XTX and 9070 XT, are able to match the RTX 5080 in this title. We're only looking at 69 FPS on average, but still a surprising result all the same. This also meant that the 9070 XT is 11% faster than the 5070 Ti, allowing the RX9070 non-XT model to match the 5070 Ti. Beyond those GPUs, we're dropping down below 60 FPS, and again, this is just at 1080p, where models such as the RTX 4070 Super and 7900 XT can't even average 60 FPS. Past generation flagships like the 6950 XT and RTX 3090 were neck and neck with just 51 FPS, while the more sensible RTX 3080 and 6800 XT were in the mid 40s. As we scroll down the graph, it's crazy to see what are still very capable GPUs delivering around 30 FPS, or in some cases, even less. We're also seeing 8GB GPUs struggling at 1080p. The 16GB version of the 5060 Ti, for example, was 73% faster than the 8GB model. Switching up to native 1440p, it's a frame rate killer. Just 77 FPS for the RTX 5090 and 67 FPS for the RTX 4090. Then, down below 50 FPS, we have parts like the RTX 4080 Super, 9070 XT, RTX 5080, 4080, and 7900 XTX. We also see that again, the RTX 5070 Ti competes more with the RX 9070 in this title while previous generation parts like the 7900 GRE, RTX 4070 Super, 6950 XT and RTX 3090 all fell below 40 FPS. In fact, it doesn't take long before we find GPUs that are unable to render even 30 FPS on average. For example, we have the RTX 4070 and 7700 XT, along with the current generation 9060 XT and 5060 Ti. 
So this game is very poorly optimized, in my opinion. And sure, look, the badass preset does look pretty impressive, but I wouldn't say to the degree where we're even getting close to justifying this level of performance. Wow, I feel like we've gone back 15 years when looking at the 4K data, back to a time when 4K gaming was merely a pipe dream. And that's because, look at the RTX 5090, it was good for just 45 FPS, and the 4090 just 36 FPS. That is truly ridiculous. So needless to say, performance is very broken on everything else with less than 30 FPS at native 4K. So let's just move on from the ARS preset to check out medium. Now switching to the medium preset should boost performance by around 80%, as we saw when looking at the preset scaling data, though this will of course depend on the GPU and how CPU limited you might be. I'm using the 9800X 3D, which has more headroom than most, but even so, we're looking at a 42% increase for the RTX 5090 to just 143 FPS, a very low frame rate, I would say, for this GPU at 1080p using medium settings. The 9070XT, on the other hand, did see a large 67% increase to 115 FPS, making it now faster than the RTX 4080 and 5080, albeit by a small margin, but still, this Radeon GPU is punching miles above its weight. The 7900XTX is also doing unexpectedly well here, matching the RTX 4080 and 5080. The 9070 non-XT also pushes ahead of the 5070Ti, making it 22% faster than the RTX 5070, the GPU that it typically competes with. The RTX 5070 was good for 85 FPS on average, which was similar performance to the last generation 7900 GRE. Then at just shy of 80 FPS, you'll find the 6800 XT, 7800 XT, RTX 4070, and RTX 3090. The 8 GB version of the 9060 XT matched the 16 GB model, as the medium preset lowers VRAM usage, and we see a similar thing with the 5060 Ti models. This means GPUs such as the RTX 5060 are able to deliver around 60 FPS, though the 5050 was a dud with just 44 FPS on average, along with Intel's Arc series and the older classics like the RX 6600. Switching back up to native 1440p reduces performance by around 25%, and now the RTX 5090 is good for just 119 FPS, and the RTX 4090 just 97 FPS. The Radeon RX 9070 XT is still very impressive, rendering 86 FPS, making it a few frames faster than the RTX 4080 and 5080. The previous generation 7900 XTX also matched the RTX 4080, while the RX 9070, so the non-XT model, matched the RTX 5070 Ti at just shy of 80 FPS. Then for around 60 FPS, we find the RTX 4070 Super, 7900 GRE, RTX 5070 and RTX 3090, while the 7800 XT and 6800 XT just fell short. The 9060 XT and 5060 Ti were more around the 50 FPS mark, where you'll also find the 7700 XT. Then heading down towards 30 FPS, we find parts like the RTX 5060, 3060 Ti, 4060 Ti and ARC B580. Beyond that, performance is very poor. For example, the RTX 5050 was only able to render 28 FPS on average, along with the 6650 XT and RTX 3060. Now at 4K, I have some good news. If you have an RTX 5090 and you're happy using aggressive levels of upscaling, you can enjoy a high refresh rate experience in Borderlands 4 at 4K. Though it wouldn't really be 4K because of the upscaling, but whatever, I guess it's near enough. There's not too much point going over this data in detail. Most of the GPUs can't even get close to 60 FPS. So even with the dial down medium preset, this game is brutal or rather extremely unoptimized, it would seem. So there you have it. Borderlands 3 performance was a mess upon release. And sadly, this latest installment is somehow even worse. Again, the game does look visually impressive, but I wouldn't say to the degree that justifies well under 100 FPS on an RTX 5090 at just 1440p, yeah, at least in my opinion. Then outside of an RTX 5090, things get really bad really fast. Even if you're prepared to use balanced upscaling at 1440p, mid-range GPUs are going to struggle to deliver 60 FPS. 
which I'd say is very much a suboptimal experience, given I like at least 90 FPS on my high refresh rate monitor. So this explains why so many PC gamers are annoyed with the performance and are leaving negative reviews as a consequence. In this example, I feel like it is absolutely justified. When going over the minimum and recommended PC specs for Borderlands 4, I'm at a bit of a loss. What frame rates do they think PC gamers enjoy gaming at? For the minimum specs, they call for an RTX 2070, 5700 XT, or ARC A580. I didn't even bother testing the former two, there's just no way that's going to end well. I did however test the A580, and at 1080p, with the medium settings, admittedly not the low settings, but still, I found an average of just 30 FPS. So I guess we have the answer, the minimum target is 30 to 40 FPS, so yikes. But even the recommended specs are very optimistic. They call for an RTX 3080, 6800 XT, or B580, which is a bit odd given the 6800 XT was almost 70% faster than the B580 in my 1080p medium testing. The 6800 XT and RTX 3080 were good for over 70 FPS under these conditions, and upscaling should easily get that to around 100 FPS. So decent enough performance, but we are only talking about 1080p here and 1440p will knock those figures down to just below 60 FPS. Having seen the backlash from gamers, the developer has now stated that the minimum PC specs are for a 1080p 30fps experience with the low preset, while the recommended is for 1440p 60fps with the medium preset, so that's roughly in line with our testing. The reality is, Borderlands 4 is just very poorly optimised. And you can point to this as another Unreal Engine 5 casualty, and while there might be some truth to that, I feel the real issue is just poor optimization. It has been said by some game developers that UE5 is very complex, and when used incorrectly, can be extremely slow. But when used correctly, it's technically very impressive. But to use it correctly, years of experience is required to gain the necessary level of technical knowledge. This is why some developers use their own proprietary engine and, generally speaking, deliver good results when doing so. It's because they know how to get the most out of their own in-house game engine. Of course, though, that's just part of the issue. Time is another real factor, and games like Borderlands 4 need more time in the oven so things like optimization can take place. But you guys know money and all that, so that almost never happens. Now, for this testing, I've just looked at GPU performance, but there is another big component to all of this, and that is, of course, CPU performance. And unfortunately, things look just as half-baked on that front. When testing with the RTX 5090, for example, I observed utilization of my 9800X3D hovering around 60%, which is very high, especially given I wasn't testing an NPC-rich environment. There was just a few enemies. So when using much slower CPUs, performance could very well end up even worse than what I'm showing here. The game's also very VRAM hungry with the higher quality settings. So if you have an 8GB GPU, setting the preset to low or medium is recommended or really necessary. I also suspect that features such as frame generation are going to be very difficult to use on an 8GB RTX 5060 Ti, so perhaps this is something I can investigate in future content. Hopefully we will see a performance patch released in the near future, and if that happens, I will take a look at it with a few GPUs to see where things are at. But until then, I am not that keen to play much more of Borderlands 4, and I think this is where most gamers are right now, which is really disappointing because I think the game itself is probably really good, just needs some more optimization work. And on that note, I am going to end this video. If you liked it, subscribe or like it first you can yeah do the like thing do the subscribe thing make sure you've done the youtube stuff and then also we have the join button or patreon if you want to get more hardware box goodness and support the work we do here and all the testing it will give you access to our exclusive discord server monthly live streams q a stuff and behind the scenes content so check that out if you're interested but if not that's perfectly fine and i would like to thank you for watching this video i'm your host steve see you next time